His comrades charged into a snowy darkness and immediately set out to rescue a captured teammate, Neil Roberts. During the ensuing gunfight, the badly outnumbered Americans fought valiantly. Out of nearly two dozen U.S. soldiers who set out to rescue Petty Officer Roberts, six were killed. Among the 11 wounded was Steve Tobos. Ordered to pull back from his team leader, Turbo was hit by a calibine bullet that tore a fist-sized hole in his right calf. The projectile then spiraled down his leg, shattering the bones in his ankle and his foot. Several hours later, when he was finally evacuated off of the frozen hilltop, Turbo was still shooting back at those who were trying to kill him. The U.S. doctors in Afghanistan saved his life. The doctors in Germany and back home in the United States were trying to save his leg. But after multiple surgeries, Steve figured he would be better, he'd get better faster without it. He ordered his doctors to amputate his leg below the knee. Remarkably, that did not end his career in the Navy. After being fit for an ultra-modern prosthetic limb, Turbo joined his team in Afghanistan. He said he did it because Neil Roberts was his closest friend and because his parents taught him patriotism, duty, and determination. Today, Steve is serving as an advanced sniper training manager for special operations. Unless his young students hear it from others who know the story, they might never know that Turbo has a metal leg and a foot and that he was awarded one of our nation's highest awards for valor, the Silver Star. We see America's character in Steve, a hometown boy that went on to secure in a, a position with the elite Navy SEALs. He continues to uphold the legacy of his fallen brothers and it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you one of our special hometown heroes, Steve Tobos. How's everybody doing? This is all about you too. Uh, put a hand a round of applause for everybody in the stands. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. Well, thank you, sir. Commissioners. Everybody important. I missed a little dweeb here, so. <laughs> well, my folks are Stephen and I'm Glenda Tobos from Lock Haven. They not, now live in Virginia Beach, two miles from me. My father and my mother cannot take the coldness of the Pennsylvania winter anymore, so they moved down by me so they can uh, babysit me. <laughs> My brother, Sean, right there in the audience, uh, he's a state cop and Philadelphia sergeant. Hopefully he makes the uh, next step up here real soon. And Kathy beside him, the two kids have now graduated from Montoursville. They're out of school, so now they can do what they want to at home without the kids around. <laughs> well, it's also my brother's 20-year high school reunion, class of 1989. Let's put a round of applause for that, too. Congratulations. Hey, Sean, don't get too drunk today. Well, it's great to be back in Pennsylvania, especially for an awesome event like this, Hometown Heroes. Um, wow. I miss coming back and seeing everyone. Uh, but work comes first, plays second. The enemy never, never sleeps. Never sleeps. We've got to be on our toes at all times, in the States and overseas. Thank you, Julie Brennan and Chrissy. For everything, uh, Julie and Chrissy tried to get me last year to come. I was very busy, could not come. I wish I could have. If it was like this, I would have scratched what I had going on, unless it was going overseas. That, that's first. But, yeah, thank you, and I really appreciate this. This is a great honor to be here in front of everybody. I still can't stop looking at the crowd. This is great. Oh, by the way, a uh, little brown girl right there behind uh, the music man. Uh, it's my girlfriend. We have uh, four kids, three dogs, and a ferret. <laughs> and uh, my folks are babysitting right now as we speak. I wish they could be here, but my brother's obviously videotaping us, so we'll send it to him. Okay, most of my childhood, I grew up here in these mountains. These mountains and my buddies, Mark, Mark Hoy, Mark Miller, Zane, 
all these guys, they made me what I am. One of these nouns, raising hell, drinking, partying, hunting, shooting, whatever it was growing up that we do as kids. But most of my childhood in Lock Haven High School was dedicated to sports, mainly wrestling, uh, football, baseball, whatever the coaches want me to do, track sometimes, but you know how that is. I ran enough in wrestling season to try to lose weight, so. Well, after I graduated high school in 1987, I went to Clarion to uh, try a wrestling career. It did not work out so well for me. I burned out my first year. I came back to Lock Haven and finished my college. Two and a half years after that, so now I have three and a half years of college. Drop out. I'm like, boy, I'm a bum. So my father talked to me. He goes, you need to join the military. I go, okay. What do I want to do? You know, I have long hair. I'm just, I was in the ditches. Well, I, uh, I figured I'd join the Navy and become a Navy SEAL. Well, I joined the Navy in 1991. And in uh, December 18th of 1992, I graduated Bud's class, basic underwater demolition SEAL training. In December 1992, Bud's class 185. 165 original members, 11 of us graduated that class. So you can see the dropout rate. 11 original members out of 165 people. 